Well, hey, good Saturday to you, friends. I'm excited to be back with you for another devotional Bible study around the theme of Thanksgiving. I'd love for you to turn uh, in your Bibles to the book of Philippians, Philippians chapter 4, and we're going to be looking at verses 6 and 7. While you're turning there, Philippians 4, 6 and 7, I, I hope you're enjoying this week of thanks. I know I sure have. It's been um, really uplifting to when we get beyond the mourning of the things that we've lost to a place of thanksgiving for the things that we either still have or have even gained throughout all this time. And I feel encouraged. I hope you do too. Today, I'd like for us uh, to think about the essential connection between uh, thanksgiving and our prayers of petition. And by prayers of petition, I mean those things that we ask for from God, that we petition God for, be they a material thing or or some you know move of the Lord in someone's life or something on a grander scale in, the, in our nation or the world. When we go to God and we say, oh Lord, and we, we pray for and we ask for, that's a prayer of petition. And uh, I'd like for us to think about the connection between living a thankful life and uh, how that propels uh, our petition prayers. You know, in Colossians chapter 4, verse 2, it says, Devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. And so there's this image of a person praying, and they're watching, and they're watching for the answer, and they're also thankful. To God in the midst of this waiting time. And Philippians 4, 6, and 7 is uh, one of my favorite spots. I've quoted it hundreds of times, I'm sure, to myself and to others. And it says, do not be anxious about anything. So don't worry about anything. I know we visited this uh, considering worrying not too long ago. But I want to show you something else. But in everything, by prayer and petition, and then the phrase, with thanksgiving, Present your requests to God, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. What a great promise that if we pray, if we if we decide not to worry, but that if we pray with prayer and petition, that's asking God, with thanksgiving, then the result of that will be a flood of the peace of God in our lives that passes understanding, that just defies explanation. And again, here we see this connection between thanksgiving, with thanksgiving, petition, and petition. And you got to kind of ask yourself the question, because I could show you this in a number of different places in both the Old and New Testaments. you got to kind of ask yourself the question, what is the relationship between thanksgiving and petition that is such a consistent, uh, kind of such a consistent theme to have them together? And my answer is this. I think thanksgiving releases faith. When we give thanks, then our faith is elevated and it releases faith. Remember the subtle, the subtle but important distinction between thanksgiving and praise. Now, thanksgiving is, is showing gratitude for the things God has done in our lives, things we have seen him do. Um, whereas praise is uplifting God, extolling God, adoring God, simply for who he is, whether he has done anything or not. So thanksgiving and praise are certainly close first cousins, but there, there's an important distinction between the two. And when we re revisit with gratitude the things that God has done in our lives, which is thanksgiving, then our faith is renewed. When we just think back and as we pray, just thank God for the things that he's already done, our faith is renewed, which then has this perpetuating effect uh, it perpetuates us again into greater prayers of petition. So it's a kind of an increasing cycle that as we thank God for some answer to prayer, our faith is heightened and we pray a bigger prayer and then we thank God for that. And, and this, is, this is so much the prayer life of the believer is just always living in this wonderful relationship between thanksgiving and petition. Can you remember a time in your life when you know, God just did something important at, at, and you had been praying about it and you had been asking for it. And you, it, it, maybe it was maybe one of the first times where you kind of went, it worked. <laughs> it worked. You know, you're praying by faith to an invisible God 
faith in the scriptures, faith in the testimony of others, faith in your own, you know, propelled by your own sense of, of need for God, desire for God. And then something happens where the prayer is answered. Can you remember a time when that happened? And then you gave thanks for that. You said, oh, thank you, Lord. And that, that whole experience of answer and thanksgiving perpetuated you then to do what? To pray again and to pray again and to pray again. And so this is the relationship I want you to think about today between thanksgiving and petition. Uh, and, and it just underscores uh, the, what we talked about uh, last couple of times, and that is the importance of having a running thank you list. I mean, it's great to have it in our minds, but how much better is it to actually write it down and just be thankful for the things that God has done? As we have this running thanksgiving list, oh, thank you, God, for that and for that and for that. And then as we have this running thanksgiving list, it propels us then to pray again to ask again and to see God move again and thank him again. And this is the life, so much the life of the believer. Last time we talked about our, our Thanksgiving lists and uh, you may remember that uh, one of the things, by the way, I'm really grateful for those of you who did send in an email telling me some of the things you're thankful for. That is so encouraging. If any of you would like to do that, my email address is Tom, T-O-M, at G-C Vineyard, V-I-N-E-Y-A-R-D dot org. Tom at G-C for Grove City, G-C Vineyard dot org. I'd love to hear from you, and I'd love to hear about the things that you're thankful for. Uh, but anyway, uh, if you may remember that one of the things I mentioned on my prayer list or my Thanksgiving list, sorry, uh, was we were out at the Tel Darby Metro Park and I was thankful for the Metro Parks. And I don't know how many of you know this, but for many years, long, even before I was in the vineyard, uh, many years, I just would go almost every day, several times a week at the very least, to a nearby Metro Park in Columbus and just pray. And I just found it to be a prayer spot, a wonderful discipline of going and meeting with the Lord. And I would have sometimes these massive stacks of index cards with people's names and record prayer requests. It was it was wonderful. But I but from time to time, uh, Karen and I, as some of you know, we've always longed to be back on the farm. And so from time to time, I would I would just cry out to the Lord. I said, I really love meeting you this way. Could I have one of these? Could I have one of these metro parks? And as as so many of you know, for the last 15 years, we have lived on what was a 26 acre field on which we have built a three bedroom home. And it's, it's all very simple and modest in many ways, but it's so wonderful just to be able to step outside my door and to walk in the wonder of God. And, you know, it's that kind of answer that just every day causes me to say, thank you. And it propels greater prayers. What's on your list of thanksgiving that could help propel you toward important prayers of petition? What's on your list? You know, I think I've told you also that as a younger man, I came to Christ, was the first one in my family. I was introduced to Christ through as a teenager. And so the man, Pastor Charles Hilliard, Charlie Hilliard, who prayed with me at that camp to receive Christ, he you know, and, uh, and I went home and tried to tell my family about what had happened, and I was met with such strange silence. And my dad, who was a successful design engineer in, in many ways, um, he was an agnostic and avowed agnostic. And I used to pray, God, if there's anybody on this earth you can't save, it's my dad. Well, 10 years after I came to the Lord, the same man, Pastor Charles Hilliard, prayed with my dad to receive Christ in Michigan. And, you know, it's that kind of thing that every time I could just give thanks for my dad's salvation that caused me to say, oh, there's nobody on the earth that I wouldn't pray for for salvation now because of what I saw the Lord do. Now, so what's on your prayer list? And maybe it's not as big as a metro park or, or someone's salvation, but what is on your thanksgiving list that could help propel you forward in important prayers of petitions. Would you just review that? And would you just keep building that list and keep living in thanksgiving and faith in the name of Jesus? Love you guys. Uh, long, long to see you. I hope to see you tomorrow. We'll be, uh, we'll be talking in the services uh, be, you know, in person and online. We'll be, we'll be considering the role of thanksgiving and the sacrifice of thanksgiving that God calls us to give. I'm excited about that. I think you'll enjoy it.
So we'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. I love you. I pray for you. And remember, 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 live by faith, but walk in wisdom. See you soon.